Good day to you from ESF's Entomology Greenhouse. As we all know, life lives in a physical universe. That means that life is constrained by the same physical laws that govern everything else in that universe. Normally, we think of constraints as limitations, but one of the remarkable things about life is the multitude of clever ways that organisms have found to turn these constraints into new opportunities. Recently, when I was doing work at my field site in northern Namibia, I found a remarkable example of this. It involves a common and widespread group of insects, the click beetles. So, let's have a look. The click beetles of the family Elateridae are a cosmopolitan group that includes more than 9,300 species worldwide. They're inconspicuous herbivores that are usually quite small, although some, like this species from northern Namibia, can get to be quite large. They get their name from their response to being harassed by a predator or being flipped on their backs. They emit a loud pop, which comes from a violent movement of their bodies that can lift them off the ground. To a predator, the effect can be quite startling, which is presumably the benefit to the beetle. If the beetle is on its back, the motion can launch the beetle into the air, landing it on its feet again. There's something interesting about this behavior. Muscles cannot contract fast enough to provide such a violent motion. How the beetles manage it, nevertheless, has some interesting physics behind it. This all happens pretty fast, so let's film the click at high speed. Here it is at about four times normal speed. The click is still over quite quickly, too fast to capture at this speed, but we see an interesting clue. As the beetle goes still before the click, notice how the legs draw in and the antennae draw back. Let's watch that again. We'll come back to this momentarily. We're still missing a lot of detail, so let's push the high-speed video camera to its limit of 1,000 frames per second. This makes the image a little grainy, but it's good enough to reveal some interesting detail. The first interesting detail is counterintuitive. According to Newton's third law, we expect the body to be launched upward in reaction to a rapid downward movement of the head. This is not quite right. The click is, in fact, initiated by the head's rapid upward movement. The explanation comes from the second interesting detail. Look how the body oscillates after the click. This gives us two clues to the physics at work. First, the oscillation is a clue that strong elastic forces are at work during the click and launch. We'll quantify this in a moment. But how does this explain why the click gets the beetle airborne? For that, we need to look at the motion more closely. Let's simplify the beetle's body to a pair of weights, one for the head and one for the abdomen and thorax, joined by a pivot between the head and thorax. The two weights are coupled together by a spring. Let's look first at the motion of the beetle plus its simplified parts. And now for the simplified parts alone. We can quantify these motions. Let's look first at the velocities of the head and the pivot point between the head and thorax. The units are in pixels per second. The initial upward rotation of the head takes 2 milliseconds, followed by 4 milliseconds of rapid downward movement of the head from the body's elastic recoil. If we look at the motion of the pivot point, we see that it is the reaction against this downward recoil that lifts the pivot and the body off the ground. Newton's third law is saved. There's an additional point, though. What lifts the body is force, and Newton's second law says force is mass times acceleration. In this instance, the acceleration is angular, the motion of the head about the pivot. We can calculate these angular motions. Here is the angular velocity of the head about the pivot. 
gets very fast, reaching as high as 200 radians per second on the upswing and down to about minus 180 radians per second on the initial downswing. Let's put that in perspective. A circle spans an arc of 2 pi radians. An angular velocity of 200 radians per second amounts to 200 divided by pi, or about 32 revolutions per second. In terms of the tachometer on your car engine, this is about 1900 RPMs. It's angular acceleration that generates the force, though. The lift comes from the reaction to the change in angular velocity from 200 radians per second to about minus 180 radians per second on the downswing. In terms of our car engine example, this is equivalent to reversing the engine's spin from rotating at 1900 RPMs in one direction to about 1200 RPMs in the other direction, and this is done in only 4 milliseconds. No muscle can move this fast. Some of the fastest muscle-powered angular velocities ever observed can be found in the arms of elite baseball pitchers. The angular velocities there approach only about 40 radians per second, roughly a fifth of what we're seeing in the click beetle. Most muscle power systems will do considerably worse. So something else is powering that click. If it's not muscles, then what? To find out, let's look more closely at the beetle's body. The click works on a catch mechanism formed by a modified pair of segments of the insect's thorax. The most anterior thoracic segment is called the prothorax. Along its ventral surface, or prosternum, the exoskeleton is elongated into a stiff backward-pointing spine, shown here. This spine normally fits neatly into a pocket that extends beneath the exoskeleton of the adjacent thoracic segment, the mesothorax. When the beetle is flipped onto its back, it flexes the head back and forth. As it does so, note how the prosternal spine slides into and out of its mesothoracic pocket. This motion alone can right the beetle by unbalancing the body enough so that the beetle rolls over upright again. If rolling over doesn't work though, that's when the beetle tries the click. Here's how that works. One key is in the rim of that pocket in the mesothorax. Here it is in close-up. You can see that it's heavily reinforced with a shallow depression right in the middle. If the beetle positions its head just so, the tip of the spine settles into this little depression and catches there. The beetle is still contracting the muscles that flex the head, but the head can't move now because the spine is caught. Now, instead of flexing the body, these muscles deform the exoskeleton ever so slightly. That's what's drawing the antennae and legs in. Eventually, the tip of the spine slips off its catch and the beetle's head pops violently forward. That's the click. The problem remains, though, how to get a faster rotation of the head than the muscles can deliver. Here some simple muscle mechanics will help. Muscles do mechanical work by moving loads over distances. This is Newton's second law. Work is force times distance. The click beetle's muscles do work flexing the head with respect to the body, with the head's inertia and resistance to flexing being the load. Muscles can only shorten so fast, though. Let's call this the intrinsic rate of shortening. Now, Newton's second law gives us work rate, which is the product of the load and the muscle's intrinsic shortening velocity. Now, the work done is the area under the curve of work rate, force times intrinsic rate of shortening, over the time the muscle is contracting. Remember that work is energy, and energy is a conserved quantity. Now let's come back to the beetle. The head can flex because there is a muscle that spans the head and thorax, which connects by elastic tendons to attachments to the exoskeleton at either end. Once the spine has caught, the muscle keeps contracting. Instead of moving the head, though, the muscle stretches these elastic tendons. And when elastic things stretch, they store energy. This is how the beetle is powering its click. It uses a relatively slow shortening muscle to store energy in an elastic tendon that can release its energy much faster at a later time. To do so, it needs a catch mechanism, which the click beetle has. We can quantify this. The time between setting the catch here and the release of the catch here is about 84 milliseconds. The time between the release of the catch and the initial flex of the head is 4 milliseconds. Let's remember now that energy is conserved. If the muscle stores a certain amount of energy in those tendons during those 84 milliseconds, this energy will be recovered from the tendons once the catch is released. 
If we assume that the storage and recovery is completely efficient, this means the tendon does work on the beetle's head at a rate that is 84 over 4 or 21 times faster than the beetle's muscles could. The recovery of energy is, in fact, pretty efficient, shown by the ongoing oscillation of the body after its launch. We can quantify this, too. If we plot the angle of the head to the body during the click, we see that the oscillation is damped. This means that some energy in the tendon is bleeding off as heat. Each oscillation is about 63% of the previous one, meaning that 37% of the stored energy is bled off as heat. So even with this loss of energy, the work rate will be 21 times 63% efficient, or 13 times the work rate than could be obtained from the muscle alone. This leaves ample power to launch the beetle. Holy jumping click beetles, Batman! Let's review what we've learned. First we learned that click beetles can jump only because of very rapid motions of the body. It's these rapid motions that provide the reaction forces that get the beetle airborne. There's just one problem though. These motions are far faster than any muscle is capable of delivering. Second, click beetles jump using muscle power, just like every other animal does, but its muscles are only secondary to the process. Rather, what does the actual work of getting the beetle airborne is a rather claptrap mechanism that involves elastic recoil of the body. And third, we learned that muscle work is fungible. That is, it can be transferred, stored, and used later to do mechanical work. This is the click beetle's clever trick. It uses a catch mechanism so that slow acting muscle can store energy over a long period of time in elastic tissues. When the catch is released, this stored energy can be released much faster than the muscle by itself can deliver. And it's this rapid release which gives the power advantage the beetle needs to launch its body into the air. Okay, from the Entomology Greenhouse at SUNY ESF in Syracuse, that's all for today. Until we meet again, this is Scott Turner wishing you a good day. <laughs> Ikri <laughs>